Okay, replacing the seal that I just got in for the speedometer. This is a uh, TR6 uh, gear and speedo coupling. It seals better, that's why I went with it. And to get that old seal out of there, it happens that a 3 8 bolt threads into it, and then I put the bolt here. This was hanging down, and I put the open end wrench around here, the shoulder, and tapped it down with the hammer. And that worked pretty well. Switching out the studs here to go away from the wire wheel adapter so I can put on my new rims. I was worried I'd have to take this all apart, which I really didn't want to do, but fortunately they're not too hard to get out and I can tap them back and there's just enough room to get the new stud in there. And so I'm going to pull it in with uh, a few washers there. That looks better. Okay, you got the front wheels on now too, putting in new wheel studs. I had to take the rotor off and separate it from the I don't know, hub extension, whatever you call it, but not too bad. Put in the new studs. <clears throat> Started up the engine, it fired up right away. I primed it, found gas leaks where I didn't have my uh, compression fittings quite tight enough. And then of course I found a coolant leak. I forgot to tighten my plug here. But other than that, pretty happy with it firing right up. I also had coolant leak here around the base of this where I tried to use the blue colored RTV instead of the proper water pump RTV. So I take that all apart and replace it. I'm wondering if it's going to seal this time or not, but at least this is easy to change. And had another leak through the water pump weep hole, which I just had rebuilt. Here's another water pump that I have. And so I put it in, put it in without the gasket. And you can see those two holes there, which I think are just so they could drill internal passageways. Well, and that one's a weep hole. But the gasket plugs those, and I didn't use the gasket, and so those holes weren't plugged, and I was losing coolant out that hole. Not, not a lot, but had to fix that. So I guess you gotta use the gasket or make sure you plug those holes. I've been working on the electrical, so I put in the fan controller. I didn't cut the wires because I'm not sure if I want to put the sensor there on the radiator or not. It would be better on the block, but there's not a spot to do it really. I don't want to give up my uh, gauge, and so the other place would be the heater hose, but I think I want to hook the heater back up at some point. So I'm going to put it here to start with and see it should be pretty close to the same temperature. The water only has to go a short distance to get to here. But I left the wires long in case I want to change it. And then I had, of all the lights, I had one headlight working. And played around for a while. I got this headlight working. Found a connection was pulled out there. And still couldn't get any other lights to work. And it turns out that the lights come through this upper fuse all but the headlights and I had plus 12 here but not here and I, so that would make you think the fuse is bad but the fuse was good and so it's actually corroded underneath this clip so I'm trying to clean that right now just to get it to work temporarily and I'll probably put a new fuse block in <clears throat> the other uh, fuse here is for stuff that comes on with the ignition like gauge lights uh, not sure about the turn signals. I forgot where those go, but it's shown here. There's the two fuses, and the lower one is all this stuff, the lights for the, and the gauges and so on. At least on my car, it's the lower one. Who knows how it's wired on all the other ones. And so this side is all the lights. All right, that's fixed up all my lights, at least the uh, marker lights, I think, unless there's supposed to be a light here, but I'm not going to worry too much about that right now. This one's also out. 
So I think uh, it really wasn't the top. I cleaned the top of that contact where the fuse is under, under here. It didn't help. And it was so dirty, I thought that was plastic down here, but that's actually the metal that these lugs go on to. So I sanded that up and that fixed it up. I don't have high beams, I have low beams, so I think I'll work on that next. Well, that was easy. There was just a wire off the dipper switch, as they call it. I hooked that up, and now I have high and low beams. So I put this back together. <clears throat> I removed the blue RTV I'd used, and I put in the proper water pump RTV. <clears throat> Started it up, and I had a bigger leak than ever, just shooting up in the air. And I think I figured out it was actually from this hose here this is casting is quite rough and there's a mold line here so I think it wasn't sealing around there so I'm gonna try to goop it up and <clears throat> clamp it again I'm taking out this bypass I, or the block I had in here because I'm afraid there's so much pressure because I have the souped up water pump so there's so much pressure when the thermostats closed despite the two holes I drilled in it and with this plug that it's just well creating too much pressure I'm not sure that explains the leak down here on the intake side but I'm taking that out anyway and I can put it back if I have to but I'm gonna start with it out 